the vertical vector and the spherical vectors are represented by products of functions of one variable. Uh, so both systems are uh, resolved uh, simultaneously with the help of, of one single realization. Of course, the formulas are different. Uh, this limiting procedure, I know about it, but I don't, didn't think uh, how to implement it, uh, how to pass from one formula to another. That's probably possible, but I cannot, I cannot say it for sure now. Uh, so, uh, just the, uh, that coordinating formula, though they will be for tomorrow, and right now, I'm just uh, turning to the elementary uh, uh, quantum inverse scattering method. And uh, so we have uh, quantum mechanical operators for, for Toda uh, or for Kalodger Moser, if you wish, uh, the coordinate and momenta. Uh, and just to simplify formula, which I'm going to write, I uh, set uh, everywhere uh, the Planck constant equal to 1. Uh, of course, it's just possible to rescale everything, and then it's, more, it's probably more physical and uh, it's more transparent, uh, but also it's more, much more bulky. So, without Planck constant, it's, sim it's more simple. And so, uh, this was the elementary ad hoc idea, just to be write a two-by-two two matrix uh, with non-commuting entries uh, represented by P's and Q's. Uh, and uh, we have this uh, space, the representation of space for the Heisenberg algebra uh, is in the quantum space. And we have an auxiliary space, which is just C2. Uh, and uh, the, the key point, uh, the, the, this the, f the very force of this quantum scattering machinery is just the possibility to uh, replace uh, quantum commutation by linear transformation of the auxiliary space. And this is done by with the help of this very famous quantum R matrix, uh, which is the rational R matrix. Uh, well, just U is a spectral parameter which will play a prominent role ever since. Uh, and P is just the permutation operator. And so everybody who has seen a little bit of uh, quantum analytic scattering method should not be surprised. Uh, and uh, our uh, potential just contains these real exponentials, uh, e to the uh, q, and we have these commutation relations. And uh, this is the very famous commutation formula, the uh, uh, commutation formula between two uh, uh, lux, quantum lux matrices, uh, if we just permute them, uh, which means that the quantum operators appear on the left in one, on one side and on the right uh, in the on the other side, and this amounts to purely into a conjugation by means of an operator acting in C2 cross C2. This is the famous formula for which everything started. And now this, the advantage of this uh, commutation relation is just once we have put it into this fancy form, we are sure that, well, this is uh, we can just form this monotony matrix just mul by multiplying local uh, lux matrices in from right from uh, uh, right to the left, uh, and uh, then this satisfies exactly this, this same kind of relations. This this is the key uh, observation uh, from which the Hopf algebra theory of quantum groups also its simplicity just in this property. And this, this property was obvious, but when we started to, to do it in, in Leningrad 40 years ago, we didn't know enough of, of algebra. So it was dreadful to explain to everybody that this is a hope axiom. And we are just like Monsieur Jordan. We didn't know that we 
are speaking prose. And uh, so we form this monodromy matrix. It has a trace. And this trace gives you a commutative family of operators, which is, of course, polynomial in U. Our spectral parameter is uh, when the, the length is uh, n, then we have a, a degree n polynomial, and we have just a few coefficients which can be computed explicitly. And the first coefficient is just the total momentum, and the second coefficient uh, is this, is just the elementary symmetric function, uh, the product of pi, sum of products of uh, pi i pi j, or it's just this one by the elementary. Why do you have plus? Sorry? Why is there last plus t1 minus p1 minus and then plus p1? Plus, well, just, uh, well, just you have a polynomial, just uh, all other coefficients, just the lower coefficients, just give you all other integrals which commute automatically with, with, the, with the quantum Hamiltonian. T1 is just the, it's minus the sum of O of O momenta. Well, maybe there is some misprint, just I cannot, I cannot see it now. Sorry. Uh, just what is important uh, is that in this way we get the periodic total Hamiltonian, just we give this uh, term and then we get uh, 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 this, uh, this term also. And this is just the, uh, the, the periodic order. And this was, of course, the, the main goal at the time when people started to do it. Uh, they wanted to solve the spectral problem for periodic order. And uh, just physically understand that we have a well, just uh, we have one more potential which closes uh, the, uh, the positive veil chamber, uh, and the particles cannot escape uh, from that, uh, what Vorbaki calls alcove of uh, the uh, veil group. Uh, and then the spectrum, of course, is discrete. Is dis is discrete, discrete. Uh, and uh, the question is just how to find the spectrum explicitly. It's just some kind of uh, <coughs> transcendental or algebraic equation uh, which would give you the spectrum. And the same question was, of course, addressed for simpler models such as magnetics. And uh, then it's successfully solved by means of the algebraic Bertrandsatz. And you get a, a compatible system of uh, algebraic equations which determine the spectrum. And it was a, a matter of great work to show that these, these uh, equations, better equations, have enough solutions and that they do indeed give the complete description of the spectrum. That's, that's a long story, but morally, it's rather simple with uh, these, uh, with these uh, magnetic models. Because uh, in the, for that, these magnetic, you have a special reference state, the vacuum, or the pseudo-vacuum. You can find uh, a, a, a simple eigenfunction, and then you can produce other eigenfunctions by acting uh, upon this pseudo vacuum by uh, some raising operators which are computed from the, from the monotony matrix. That's a, uh, that was done uh, just in the very first years and months of the development of quantum noise scattering method. And simultaneously, it became clear that it doesn't work for, for Toda because there is no pseudo vacuum and uh, everything is bad for that. Now, I shall not be able to solve periodic Toda and I shall say little about it. But my point is that uh, the, uh, the formula for quantum mass scattering which are applied to open Toda, they are in fact very much interesting for the presentation theory. All, represent, all um, implications of quantum scattering met, method for 
elementary representation theory of finite dimensional Lie groups, they come from uh, open total. So you are saying that for, for, for periodic Toda, you cannot find the reference state, absolutely. Yes. Uh, it doesn't exist. Well, uh, just, uh, we shall see what we can do for, for Toda. Uh, for open Toda, we shall uh, reduce the equations of motions by applying this separation of variables technique. Uh, we shall reduce them to a system of compatible first order difference equations with explicit solutions which are given by products of gamma functions. For periodic case, we have got the same thing. We have got, again, a system of compatible uh, commuting difference separators uh, in one variable, uh, and the, the, the total eigenfunction is a, is, a, is a common solution of this, of this system. But the only difference is that this case, in this case we get second order difference equations. And this difference is technically very much important because it's much more difficult to solve second order uh, functional difference uh, equations uh, rather than elementary equations which are solved by means of gamma functions. And this, this is what the state of art. Uh, second order difference equations are hard to, to solve. But there is any but, proof that there is no solution to these equations? Well, uh, there is a proof that there is a solution. Even you can, but you, you cannot deal with, uh, with them in a, in a, as uh, expli so as explicitly as you can do it for open toda. You, okay. you, you must uh, look for some Hill determinants, for the zeros of Hill determinants, etc., etc. There, there is a, uh, uh, m some machinery to, to start working with this problem, but uh, with no immediate simple result uh, which you can, you can get in this way. Just you, you, you are engaged in a complicated analytic story. Uh, by contrast, uh, in, for the open order and for the, finite, the, for the representations of uh, finite dimensional uh, Lie groups, you, have, uh, you get something very simple and very explicit. And for you, the pseudo-vacuum is defined as a, a, a vector which is a mediated yes. yes. So, just uh, the, I just want to explain that. Uh, the open toda is also there. Uh, the periodic toda is given by the trace of monodromy. But if you just look at uh, these operators A, B, C, well, D is also there, uh, but it's enough to consider A, B, C. Uh, they give Hamiltonians of the open toda. Well, A gives the Hamiltonians of open toda, and D which is added up to A to form the trace of the monotony. Just add some terms which close the, uh, cl close the, the lattice. So it's in this way. And also we have uh, these commutation relations which show that B are commutative and C is a commutative and commutation relation between A and C is this one, and this is technically a very much important relation. We shall see why. So probably also the one between A and B. Yes. Uh, and where we, or even maybe not, uh, we had a brilliant mathematician and physicist uh, in uh, Leningrad who unfortunately died already, Igor Komarov. Uh, and it's his remark which was very much important. It was just, it was uh, 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 this remark of Komarov triggered the subsequent development. So it's I, Kamarov should be remembered with respect to, in connection with this story. And so comes the tremendously important idea of Sklenin. Uh, we have this uh, polynomial pencil of operators uh, which commute with each other. And 
uh, it's a polynomial in U, and it can be uh, decomposed into products of uh, uh, just uh, elementary factors, roots. The roots operator operator roots of this polynomial, which are mutually commuting self adjoint operators. So actually, Skiani uses B, the zeros of B, but for it, is the same. What's the story? Yes. So let's let's introduce this definition, and this is what will become our key object. These are quantum separated variables. Why do we call them in this way? This will become, and uh, if we just uh, take a representation in the direct sense in which all these operators are multiplication operators, then this is the separation representation. So this is our key definition, which goes back to Sklenian. Now, this is one more technical definition, which will be of importance. We can evaluate our polynomial uh, An of u uh, by substituting the one of the roots. And in this way, we get these operators for A and this other operator for D. They do not necessarily commute with each other, uh, and so uh, the coefficients are placed on the left, and the operators lambda hat are placed on the right. And here comes another formula, which is more or less evident, uh, uh, and this is the Lagrange interpolation formula, which means that we can uh, restore the, this operator pencil from its roots and from its values. So, uh, and uh, we, we take care of the, of the first coefficient, which is just the, the, the total momentum. So, and this accounts for this overall factor. When we do it in this way, then it's straightforward to see that it's a good choice that uh, in, the, uh, in the development uh, in, in powers of U of our polynomial, we shall get just the, the correct coefficient before U n to the minus 1. So these are interpolation formula, again, introduced by Sklenian. And then we have these basic commutation relations, uh, which follow from these definitions. And these relations are very much important. They mean that together, uh, the operators lambda hat and lambda capital, they form something of, like uh, the Weyl algebra or the Heisenberg algebra or whatever you like it, just, but these are just shift operators, not, not the derivations. And so this is the key commutation relation which accounts for the rest. And this means that uh, in the spectral representation for lambda hat, the, this raising and lowering operators capital lambda, they are acting as translation operators, which affect only one variable. This is a phase factor. Well, I just honestly reproduce. Oh, it's indeed, uh, I, I cannot tell uh, whether, I do, whether I do really need this factor in the formula which will follow. It was introduced by Sklenian to simplify some of the expressions uh, which he wrote down. I'm not quite sure that the, this factor will play 
any prominent role in what I have to tell right now. But so just, just skip it. It's, a, it's irrelevant. It's just a constant factor. It doesn't depend uh, on, on the site of the lattice. It just depends on, on the length. And uh, we have this algebra, plus we have the total momentum operator. So we add one more canonical pair. And together, this will give you a, a, a just a standard uh, value representation uh, of the uh, corresponding uh, canonical commutation relations just in, in variables. OK, fine. And I go next. And so this is the, the next, the, the final pair, which we add just to complete the rank of our system. We have uh, rank n minus 1 plus total momentum plus the, the extra coordinate. Uh, the extra coordinate in the, in the momentum representations acts by translation. And the total momentum is over there. Now comes one important remark, which has already been made. Uh, previously, uh, we, have, we are dealing with roots of, of a polynomial. And uh, so everything is symmetric with respect to permutation of roots. So we must assume that all functions are symmetric with respect to permutations of our variables. This is because uh, the, these uh, operators lambda were introduced as, as roots uh, uh, of a polynomial. And so everything is, should be symmetric with respect to these roots. And uh, if we assume that, then eventually the wave functions, which we shall construct, which will be the eigenfunctions of our Hamiltonian, so they will be automatically symmetric with respect to the veil group. This is uh, uh, to be compared with our form formula for uh, vertical functions. Just in coordinate representations, just we get uh, easily functions which are not symmetric. And I took uh, some good amount of work. This was, well, just I did say it, but well before uh, the discovery of total lattice, people were working on uh, vertical functions because they are important in applications to number theory. And uh, there, is a, there are quite a few works about that. Uh, Gérard Chiffman, uh, uh, Gervais, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it took them a good deal of work to establish uh, functional equations, uh, analytic continuation, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, their functional equation was not trivial. With that m function, which was figuring in my uh, formula in the uh, first hour. Uh, now, here we shall get something more simple. Just automatically, we shall get symmetric functions of, of our variables uh, and of variables lambda. Uh, and uh, this should not, uh, we shouldn't be afraid of that, because we know by that elementary remark which I have made, that uh, by simple multiplication by explicit factor, uh, which is the denominator of the harish chandra function, we can get rid of all these complicated uh, functional equations. Now, this is one remark, which is a side remark, but which is nevertheless very much important. Uh, this is about the Planchard mirror. Uh, Harishandra, as a good student of uh, uh, Dirac, knew well that to compute the Planchard measure, just the, you have wave functions which belong to continuous spectrum, and then the, when you compute the normalization integral, everything is determined by the asymptotical behavior of your wave function at infinity. And this is the way uh, you can prove the Planchard formula. This is technically complicated. And that's uh, uh, in Harish Chandra's paper. It takes maybe uh, 100 pages to get rid 
of all these analytical difficulties. Why it's difficult? It's not, it's quite easy to compute the asymptotics. And the Harish-Chandra function, C function, is, is immediately there. Uh, and so just formally, uh, you immediately get the way this, this formula for the partial measure. It's just the uh, one over uh, square of the absolute value of C of lambda. That's uh, every uh, uh, physicist would, would say it immediately. But Harish Chandra wasn't that simple. Uh, he proved it. And to prove it, one has to work hard because of the problem of uh, non-uniform convergence to this asymptotics near the, 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 the walls of the veil chamber. And that uh, requires a tremendous amount of work. Uh, and again, Harishandra knew it well. How do, do people do it in quantum mechanics? They replace differential equation by an integral equation using some appropriate green function. And then they uh, uh, do iterations in this integral equation with which is of a Volterra type, and then they are able to prove uh, the, the appropriate rate of convergence. And that's what he did. That's tremendously complicated, because instead of one single integral equation, he has got a, a system of compatible integral equations, and he has to prove them that they, have, uh, they, they do behave exactly as uh, they should for in the in Volterra case. So th this, this is the hard uh, core of Harishandra's work. I guess nobody has ever read it except myself. Uh, but what is important about all that? Uh, you get this formula, of course, and you get, you know already the, the answer by Gindik and Kripilevich, which is an, just an integral. He computes an integral, and it, it, um, after some change of variables, it becomes product of beta functions, beta integrals of Euler. Uh, and that's all. Uh, in particular, uh, there is no rule whatever for the difference equations which is satisfied by beta function and by gamma function. It's just, uh, it's just transformation of integrals. So neither the computation of uh, Gedeke and Kripalevich nor the computation of the Prancherial measure uh, uh, due to Harishchandra uh, doesn't use uh, the, 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 the difference equations satisfied by gamma function. It doesn't play any role at all. So here, for the first time in Sklein's approach, the things change. And uh, we just have this very elementary property of the monodromy, uh, which means that conjugation uh, in the quantum space amounts just to this, this symmetry of the monodromy. And uh, then, uh, when we look at our apparatus, lambda hat and capital lambda, this yields immediately such formulas. Uh, the conjugation formula for this uh, apparatus, which follow from the simple symmetry for the monotony. And we have to reconcile it with the uh, vein representation, which we have introduced where lambda, uh, uh, little lambda is acting as multiplication and a capital lambda is acting as shift. And of course we can reconcile the things by introducing some weight factor. Uh, so we have uh, some uh, weighted L2 on the line where our operators are acting. Uh, and then we get a difference equation for mu which has to be imposed if you want to have uh, the desired symmetry. So we do it. Here it is. And here is the solution. Sorry? Oh, yes, of course. You are, you are right. This this factor must be reproduced here. It's just a misprint. I shall correct it. Uh, and uh, here's the solution, which is 
quite elementary. And this is the correct solution. It's not quite rigorous because such equations, uh, when you solve it, there is a problem of quasi constants. You can multiply it by some periodic function, and uh, the absolute uh, value of the uh, of the gamma function is a uh, it's two it's uh, it has period uh, two uh, while the transition is by one. So uh, it's not a contradiction, but you can just multiply everything by something which has period one uh, and. The, the equations will be still satisfied. So this uh, stresses the fact which I still didn't address. When we are dealing with these <coughs> different separators, we have very little knowledge about the appropriate functional analysis which is needed just to work with such different separators. Uh, everybody knows how to work with differential operators and it took just several decades of hard work with Sobolev and other people who explained how to work with, differ with differential operators, but uh, uh, dif different separators of this kind, which are acting across, these are unbounded different separators which uh, are acting across the, the real axis on which all the functions are defined with their uh, domains consisting of functions which admit some continuation into the, into the band across the real axis. So the, uh, and we, of course, we must impose some growth conditions on these functions of the fragment Lindelof type, just to assure some natural properties. So uh, I should say simply that I do not know enough functional analysis to deal with this problem. And this is, this is a challenge. People do not know it, because they were working in different directions for for decades, they didn't ever uh, ask such questions. Another, and this now it has become very much important. You can uh, see other papers, uh, other other situations in which more complicated difference equations appear. These are the, the difference equations for, for QD logarithm introduced by Fadeev, etc. This is a, uh, an open area in functional analysis. People don't know it enough, and it's a challenge which has to be addressed if we want to take seriously what, what, what is going to follow. Uh, but, uh, so it's not a proof of provincial theorem, of course, because of this possible role of quasi constants We just, what we see is that we have a solution from, of this equation which is compatible with the correct answer. That's, that's, that's immediately true. But it's not, an, but it's not a proof. But, but pro possibly a proof can be, uh, uh, can be made on these lines if you uh, uh, apply a better analytic technique. So, let me... I'm However, the key role of the different equation is very remarkable. That was my remark which I wanted to make. And here is this key fact, which is already, which should be, which should have become already clear from what I'm being uh, uh, telling, uh, or from what I was telling, uh, uh, just this, uh, we get a system of difference equations instead of system of differential equations for the wave functions. So. We can introduce the common eigenfunctions and we parameterize them by the eigenvalues of the operators. Well, x, m are just the coefficients in the expansion of, of our. And so these are our eigenfunctions. The, the eigenvalue is just a symmetric polynomial, just elementary symmetric polynomial uh, uh, in the spectral variables. So again, we have introduced spectral variables. Uh, the roots, while the eigenvalues are, in fact, not the roots themselves, they are just symmetric polynomials of those roots. And this means, and if we just look at the definition of, of the coefficients, that when uh, 
we are acting on the wave function by our uh, operator pencil, then we just get this, these roots for our polynomial. And uh, when, we are, when we want to just to find a solution, we do it in this way. Just first of all, we, we are working in momentum representations of the, we have this trivial delta function, which accounts for the total momentum. Uh, and uh, for the rest of it, we have these equations. This, just recall that lambda minus is acting as a shift operator in momentum representation. And here's the solution. This is the promised solution, uh, which is just the, it's the, the Whittaker function in this representation of spherical, in the representation of separated value, just the product of functions of one variable. Uh, uh, know that it's remarkable uh, in one respect. Uh, the, uh, the formula of Genikin and Krepelevich is much more simple because it deals with, with roots. We have this argument, which is lambda alpha, which is lambda i minus lambda g, something like this. Uh, we have a, an argument lambda, and, and here we have a polarized expression, which depends on two sets of variables, lambda, lambda and alpha. So it's not immediately, you can't immediately interpret it in terms of roots, although the structure is very similar. And here comes the periodic case. Uh, about that periodic case, I have already spoken. Here we have two operators, the raising and uh, lambda plus and lambda minus. And we introduce again the eigenvalues, which we now denote by a different letter, not to, to, to distinguish them from the former case. And this is the system of compatible equations again introduced by Sklanian, which presumably solves the periodic total lattice. And this is a big analytic problem, just try to solve these first, second order difference equations. And this uh, tremendous difference between the two cases, it also reflects the tremendous difference between the two lux pairs which we, we are dealing with. The open toda is just a, an elementary system which has a, uh, it has got a, a lux matrix which does depend on spectral parameter two. Uh, and uh, the periodic toda, in the periodic toda you have a spectral parameter and you have a, spe uh, you have a spectral curve, etc., uh, etc., et and you have uh, to deal with the whole machinery of, uh, in the classical case, you deal with the full machinery of finite uh, band integration. And if you look at the limiting case when one potential term disappears, then your uh, uh, spectral curve, which is hyperelliptic, it becomes singular. It becomes a rational curve with singularities. And finally, you can, just in this case, you finally uh, reduce everything to a, just a matrix problem. Uh, this is, is the situation in the classical case, and in the quantum case, a similar thing happens. You have a second order system of equations which replaces, uh, it's, a, it's a quantum counterpart of what uh, should be the, uh, the final zone integration for open to the lattice. And uh, then uh, uh, you get the second order difference equation, and uh, in some limiting case, when your potential term disappears, uh, you get the first order uh, equation, which is already solvable, and we have solved it just uh, on the previous slide. Uh, so, uh, just uh, from the point of view of integrable systems, we may be dissatisfied with the situation, so we have uh, reduced we have separated variables, we have reduced 
uh, uh, our problem to some problem in one variable, it's not quite, not really manageable. It's a, it's a complicated problem, but uh, which you have to solve using uh, Hill determinants and many more things. And you must Hill determinants are not are not difficult to introduce. But what is uh, bad about uh, that solution is that uh, you you cannot get a, a good expansion of solution in terms of uh, just it doesn't I cannot say it better but it's not it's not immediate just to apply this Hill determinant technique because the solution doesn't converge where it should for the for the physical values of the coupling constants uh, but it's a different matter so people were somewhat disappointed with that old uh, answers which were got by Sklanin uh, in 94, I guess, or something like that. Uh, it was, he just abandoned that work because it didn't give him a full satisfaction. Uh, what has happened just a few years later is that uh, from the work of Lebedev and others, it became clear that even the open case is very much important. And you can get a simple and tremendously important formula for that case. And again, uh, the full implications of that story are not yet quite, quite clear, because uh, Lebedev and his friends, they were deviated in their studies by other very important matters. They have made many discoveries. They were just in permanent pursuit of new results. And so this chapter of uh, representation theory is not quite finished yet. Now I must finish now my talk. It's, I have already spoken four minutes more than I was supposed to. Uh, uh, and uh, tomorrow I shall continue and finish that story. There is still plenty of things to tell.